Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. In this webcast, we're going to discuss how to calculate heat changes that are involved in phase changes. Phase changes are physical changes that happen around us all the time, and they involve changes in energy. We're very familiar with melting and freezing. So if we put energy into a solid, it will melt and form the liquid. If we then remove energy from the liquid, it will freeze again and form the solid. We can also have boiling of a liquid to make a gas, and gas is condensing to make liquids. Less familiar is sublimation, where a solid can go directly into the gas phase. If you've ever pulled a piece of steak out of the freezer and noticed it was freezer burn, that was sublimation in your freezer. Water in the meat actually sublimed in your freezer, and then it looks kind of weird, although the meat's still edible. And then gas can undergo deposition as well and go straight into the solid phase. Let's look at this particle level simulation of a solid at a low temperature. Notice that ordered arrangement. And as we heat it, the particles move farther away from each other and become free to move around as they melt. As we then lower the temperature and remove energy from the sample, they start to rearrange themselves into an ordered arrangement and they freeze. This particle level simulation was made by the Concord Consortium. We need to be able to calculate energy changes and phase changes. But you have to keep in mind that phase changes occur without temperature changes. If you think back to the particle level animation that we were just looking at, when you put the energy into the sample to melt a solid, the energy goes into moving the particles farther away from each other. So we're changing the potential energy of the sample, but we're not changing the average speed of the particle motion. And so we don't have a temperature change when there's a phase change. Because of this, we can't use Q equals MC delta T to calculate the energy change involved. There is no delta T, which would imply Q is zero, but we know that we have to put energy into a sample to melt it. We know we have to put energy into a sample to boil it, and we have to pull energy out of the samples to freeze them or to condense a gas. And so we need a different equation. What are we going to use? Don't worry, we do have an appropriate formula. We'll use Q equals the mass times the heat of fusion, or Q equals the mass times the heat of vaporization. What do you mean by heat of fusion? What do you mean by heat of vaporization? That's the energy you have to put in to overcome the attractions between the particles. We call it the heat of fusion if we're at the freezing point or the melting point. It's the same magnitude, but different signs. So if we're at the freezing point, which would be zero degrees Celsius for water, we'll use the heat of fusion. If you're at the boiling point, so you're either undergoing boiling or condensation, you'll use the heat of vaporization. So if your sample is water and you're at 100 degrees Celsius, you'd use the heat of vaporization. Let's do a practice problem. How much energy is released when 86.2 grams of liquid water freezes? Now we're freezing water, so we're at zero degrees Celsius, so we're going to use the heat of fusion. Q equals the mass times the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization for water are well known, and I'm giving you that information. You'll always have access to it. I don't expect you to memorize that. We do know that the mass of the sample is 86.2 grams, and since we want to freeze the water, we're going to use the heat of fusion. Now I've got this in kilojoules per mole and I've got it in joules per gram, but since my mass is in grams, I'm gonna make it easy on myself and use the heat of fusion in joules per gram. So I can substitute this into my equation. I have 82.6 grams of water. The heat of fusion of water is 333 joules per gram. So a total of 27,500 joules need to be released. Now I could say that this is being released and give it a negative sign. That's perfectly fine. Of course, just follow the sign convention here. Really, I'm just asking for the magnitude. 27,500 joules of energy are released. Let's do another problem. What mass of water could be vaporized at its normal boiling point if 3,890 joules are added to water at 100 degrees Celsius? So we already have very hot water, and now we want to vaporize it. We're going to use the equation Q equals the mass times the heat of vaporization. Again, we know the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization for water. And we know that the Q value here is 3,890 joules. And since we're trying to vaporize the water, we're going to use the heat of vaporization. But we don't know the mass involved. So what I'm going to do is take my equation and rearrange it. Since I'm solving for mass, I'm going to end up doing Q divided by the heat of vaporization. And I can substitute those values in. So I had 3,890 joules and it takes 2,254 joules to vaporize one gram of water. And so I get an answer of 1.73 grams. To summarize, we can use the heat of fusion or the heat of vaporization and the formula Q equals M times H to solve for heat values that are required in phase change problems. We rely heavily on 
our algebra skills, and the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization for many substances are known, so you'll usually be given that, unless that's what you're solving for. If you found this webcast helpful, subscribe to my channel so you get all my latest videos, like the video, and leave a comment. And as a reminder, the way to get better at doing these problems is to practice them.